Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be painting this little whale planter with you. Cute little whale planter, isn't he adorable? I didn't want to do it in the colors of a traditional whale. So um, I believe I gave you gray in your paint strips that you can if you want to, but I thought that this was adorable. The colors are unique. It's, it's not what a whale really looks like, but it's ceramic, it's not a real whale. So, And then I also gave you these cute little pencils that you can sharpen and um, the uh, erases are the faces of animals. I thought they were adorable to go with the piece. So the, the first thing I would like you to do is, you see this scallop going around here? Okay, you can draw that in with a pencil. And I did it about an inch away from the tail, started with it and then went around the fin to the bottom here. Okay, so you could probably look at that and get an idea. So I start here and do scallops. See the scallops like that? See what I'm doing? See those little scallops? We're gonna bring it down to around the fin and then just end it however you'd like down here at the bottom. Okay, you get a better idea of that. Alrighty, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And that's going to be your guide to where the colors will go. Now, it's just a guide. If you go out of the lines when you paint, it doesn't really matter. Let's see if I can get it to be the same way. Okay, and then I did it on that side. All right? So now, when I paint, I normally start with the lightest colors. Now, these both of these colors are pretty light, but um, we'll start with this seafoam color. It's uh, this color here, it's called Light Teal, and I'm using Gare paints, Gare Party paints. And we're gonna take um, either one of the brushes that you have, you can use, all right? You have the two brushes, you have the square one and you have the round one. I'm gonna use the round one to first edge around the uh, scallop, okay? So I start here and then work my way to the scallop. In the same way you worked with the pencil, you work with the brush, you scallop it, and then smooth it out. You don't want big globs of paint on your piece. All right, so, and don't worry about the eye. Go over the eye. We can always go back over the eye after with other colors. So every time that I do a little bit in my brush, I do the scallop, and then I smooth it out toward the middle. Because you don't want big blobs of paint. It will never dry, and you'll get lumps and bumps in your paint. So I did go over the eye. I went over the complete eye because I will redo that later. So I'm gonna do the whole scalloped area first. And like I said, it's just a guide. You don't have to be exactly on those lines. Okay, and then, what did I do on the bottom? Always paint the bottom. I did the bottom in the blue, but you can use whatever color that you would like to do the bottom. All right, so we have that, now it's the front. So I'm gonna do this, gonna go on to this side. Now we start with my first brush load of paint away from the scallop, because if I have too much, it's gonna bleed over the lines and I want to keep that scallop line the way I did it with the pencil as close as possible to that. So I'm just pulling this out. All right, so when I dip, I put very little in the brush. Don't scoop up paint and blob it on. And I know a lot of children like to do that, but less is better. You can always go back and add more, but when you have too much on, it's hard to get rid of it or to smooth it out before it dries and it dries with ridges in the paint. Okay, so I have that scallop done. And on the bottom, I'm gonna do just the little rim under his face. Because if I bring, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go right down to that rim there. Because I don't wanna bring the navy up too close to his face because you might see it when it's laying on a table. Or the, the darker blue color. Nice and smooth. Now you could switch to your other brush at this point if you want the bigger brush, but this one seems to be working fine. And there's no hurry. Take your time when you do things. There's no hurry to finish it. But I just want you to see, like if you put the paint on like that and you leave those lumps, those ridges in there, that will dry like that and it won't look very nice. So you must smooth it out. So even though I'm putting a little bit more in my brush right now, I make sure that I smooth every single spot before I dip for more paint. Nice and smooth.
Now this, this video is for all of you children who picked up the kits at the library. And I thank you for doing that and for joining me on this YouTube video. But for all of my subscribers out there, it's cute. It's a cute piece also. And even though you may not think it's geared to adults, if you have classes or you teach or anything like that, this is a great piece to do with children. But you can also use it, you know, for yourself too. I, I was thinking you could put um, little serving, little serving spoons, like little demi tasse spoons or tiny little spoons or forks in here. You know, something the size of the pencil. Uh, toothpicks might get lost. Uh, you could also put little candies. It is food safe, like I said. You could put little candies inside there. Sugar, little sugar cubes, all right? Or you could put a tea light candle and put this out on your patio for the, uh, for the summer. It has a lot of different uses. Okay, now, because I could see through my color somewhat, I would say go over it a second time. I don't have to do that right now, but I think you should, if you see through your color, just kind of go over it and spot check it. I call that spot checking it. Make sure that you don't have any white spots showing because the piece will be completely painted. So, okay, so we got that on there. And, um, oh, I didn't do navy on the bottom. I did the, the other blue. Okay, so now we're gonna wash the brush, rinse it, swish it in the water. Don't bang it on the bottom because then you don't keep the point on the brush. I, these brushes are not the best brushes in the world, but I've been using this over and over and over for these videos and it's still holding a point. So if you take care of it, it will, it will last a little bit longer. So now we're gonna be using this color, it's called Sky Blue, and it's also um, Gare's Party Paints. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that. And you see how little I use? I mean, that, that's how much of the seafoam color that I used, the teal, light teal, and I still have some in there. You don't really need a lot of color. So now I wanna use my brush again and scallop the opposite way. So I start out away from the scallop and then work my way into it. And if you go over the scallop, or go over the blue a little bit, it's okay. You see, every scallop I do, I pull the paint, I do the scallop, and then I pull it toward the back to smooth it out. Just in case I have too much in my brush and I'm starting to get those ridges in the paint. So... Continue going around and finishing the scallop first. And we'll also do the bottom. You guys can do the bottom. I always uh, tell everyone that when they do ceramics, when you do any painting, that the piece should be completely painted. And if the bottom is not painted, it doesn't look finished. So always paint the bottoms too. So I've got that on there. And I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do the other side. And again, Start out away from the scallop, work my way into the scallop. Twirl it around, smooth it out. Now, this is just a guide. You don't, you could do this however you'd like. I mean, it's your piece. I gave you gray if you wanted to do gray. I also gave you some glitter, but don't use the glitter until you're completely finished. I don't have any glitter on mine, but I know all you guys like glitter, so I put some glitter in the kits. Just don't paint anything on the inside because the inside is a glaze, and you don't need anything on the inside. I did them all like in purple color glazes. I used up a lot of the glazes that I had open, and I thought the colors were nicer than just using a clear white glaze. Okay, so now you see the stripes that I have on the tail? That is over this blue. So yes, do the whole thing in the blue and then we'll go back with the, the smaller brush and we'll put the, uh, the stripes over the blue with the teal. Now, if this is a little difficult for you to do, like I said, it's your piece. You could do polka dots using the back end of the brush, the handle of the brush. Nice and smooth, and if you need two coats, 
Just remember you have enough paint there that you can go back over it and spot check it. Leave the bottom until last to make sure that you have enough paint to do all of the piece. And um, use whatever you have left over, any of the colors to do underneath on the bottom, but you could leave that until last. Make sure that you get the top of the piece done when you have enough color. You should. You should have plenty of color there. But some people scoop it up and use a lot. Okay, so I see I keep going back and smoothing and smoothing and smoothing. Okay, I'll pull that over a little bit so you can see. I keep backtracking. I call that backtracking. I keep going back and looking to see where I have spots that need a little bit more color. So I don't just necessarily do a second coat. I do it as I'm going along. Now I work fast, you don't have to work fast. Just take your time. You can always pause the video and go back to it at another time. So I would think you need a second coat. I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now, but um, if it does, just go back and do a second coat and let it dry, all right? Again, swish the brush, we rinse it out. Now we're going to go to the teal, the uh, light teal again. I'm gonna do some lines in the tail. And if you don't wanna do lines, like I said, with the back end of the brush, I'll show you how you can do polka dots instead of the stripes. You take the handle of the brush, all right, and we would do polka dots. You could do them almost touching, so this way it almost looks like a stripe. See, instead of doing polka dots, I'm doing them with the back end of the brush to give me the stripe. You see how I did that? Let's see if I could do it closer that you can see it, okay? So I'm gonna take, uh, just do dots with the back end of the brush, and they're almost not even looking like dots. I'm just connecting them. And then I'm gonna come the other way. Instead of doing it with the hairs of the brush, the front hairs of the brush, I'm doing it with the handle. This way you won't get too much on your brush. Okay, I did that with the handle of the brush. And then I'm gonna turn it around and do the other side exactly the same way. I'm gonna to try to follow what I did, connect them almost. You have to keep dipping. If you draw the, the handle through the color, it makes a, um, an indentation in it. So I think you're better off just keep dotting it now, it will take a while to dry when you do that. That's the only disadvantage, because when you put dots on with the back end of the brush, they do take quite a while to dry. But I just wanted to make it easier for you if you can't paint those lines. Okay, well, I did that with the handle of the brush. Now, you'd wait for that to dry if you want to. You can outline it with the very dark blue. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take the very dark blue, and this is called Midnight Blue, also Gare and put a little bit out. And I have a little finer brush that I'm gonna use. Well, he has dots on him, but I wanna do the dots last because, the, like I said, the dots stay wet for quite a while. And if you put them on and then you try to do other painting, you're gonna be smearing them. I also have those same dot lines. You could do the lines in the fins, under and over on both sides. But right now I'm gonna show you how to do the outlining. So just put a little Paint in your brush and twirl it to a point. Try to get a little point on the end of your brush. And then you're gonna lean your hand, always lean your hand. If you work up in the air, you're going to shake. So lean your hand and outline those scallops, the same thing you did with the pencil. See that? All right. Just a little outline and just very little paint in the brush. And you see the amount of paint I have in the brush is doing the whole thing all the way down to the bottom. Just that one brush load, I was able to do all of that. So I put a drop of water in my brush, just a little, little, little bit, and then pick up the paint, roll the paint to a point. When you wanna do very fine lines, a drop of water in the brush is good. I hate to tell the kids to put water in the brush because they'll have it dripping down the piece, but I mean just a drop. And then put your paint in the brush and roll it to a nice point on the tip of the brush. And that might give you a better uh, you know, a thinner line than you would get if you didn't put the paint in the brush. 
And the line doesn't have to be very thin. This one's a little thicker and it's fine because it's a design. When you're doing lashes, if you're doing lashes on something, you wouldn't want it this thick. Okay, and I did that one. I just have to watch I don't touch the tail. So I have it on that side and I have it on that side. Uh, now I also, I did some outlining on these um, lines in the tail and in the fin. Now that's up to you if you want to do that. Okay, see I did two little lines around it right here. Whoops, I'll drop them. See those two little lines? You can do that. And again, a dot of water in the brush and roll it to a nice point. And even though I'm not leaning my hand on the piece right now, I have my arm braced. So that gives me a little bit um, more balance that I, I don't shake as I'm putting it on. Yeah, my, my teal is a little wet yet, but I was able to do that like one, two, three. Okay, so I'm not gonna take the time to do every one of them, but you get the idea. Now, the other thing I did before I do the eyes, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with the, um, the, the blue color, this blue color that's on the back. I'm gonna paint the entire eye in the blue. I'm gonna put that right on top of the light teal. Okay, that little eye right there. I'm gonna paint that. Now we're gonna let that dry. While that's drying, um, what I did is I put a navy blue pupil in the center. So I'm gonna take the navy blue and I'm gonna put a little water in my brush and roll it to a point and I'm gonna do his mouth. All right, and it doesn't have to be a very, very fine line. Okay, I do that next. So I'll do half and then I'll do the other half. So. You know, that didn't go on that great because I could use a little bit more water in my brush. Because normally I could do like going all the way across. See that? And then a little drop of water again. And when I put the water in the brush, I don't dip all the hairs of the brush in the water. I just put the tip of the brush in the water. This is wet and that's why I'm having a little difficulty holding on to it. So we make sure that you let it dry before you try to you know, do any of this because you really need to lean on the piece. But this will give you a rough idea. Okay, so I have his mouth done. All right, now the eyes should be dry enough to go back in and do a little circle. Now my circle is on the top of the uh, opening of the eye. I have it hit the, the top rim and I leave the teal the, the uh, blue, I'm sorry, showing underneath that navy blue, almost like a, a half moon, like a circle underneath it. Okay, so I start at the top and just do a circle. Got that? Just like that. Okay, so I have that, the two of those in. So now um, I wanna outline that eye. So now I really wanna get this brush nice and thin and pointy and with a lot of water, not a lot of water, but enough water that I can pull this to a nice point on the brush and I wanna outline the eye. And I do a couple of lashes. You know, every time I do an eye, comes different. These lashes are a lot different than the lashes I have on this one. This one has long feathery lashes, but my brush wasn't working like that. So I have shorter stubby lashes. No right or wrong. You do it however it comes out. Okay, so I do my outline first. Then I go back in. And do the lashes. Okay. Now, as far as the dots on his back, you can use a toothpick. You can use the back end of your brush. I'm gonna use the back end of the bigger brush, the brush, the square brush. I think that has a smaller handle. This, this handle's a little bigger on the pointy brush. So I'm gonna take the flat brush and I'm gonna take and dip in 
and then just do some dots and stagger them. Don't do them all over the place. Like, okay, so I'm putting two up here and then I put one between it underneath it. So you're staggering them. They're not stacked right on top of each other. If you have too many on there, then it looks like a piece of material called dotted Swiss. And there's just so many dots all over the place. It's a little uh, too much, I think. But it's your piece, like I said, and you just don't have to do every dot. You don't have to do the dots. You could do a design. And I dip like just about every two dots because if not, the dots will get smaller and smaller. Now I'm dipping every dot. Okay, just gonna do the one side so you have the idea. Okay, and then don't forget your, the, the, the fins, I guess they're fins, and the tails the tail on both sides to do it with the stripe and do the stripe with the, the back end of the brush like a, um, like dots. I think that came out just fine. And this one I did with a brush and this one I did with the back end of the brush. Okay, so now you have glitter. Now that glitter is a paint on glitter. It, um, I'll show it to you in the jar. It looks white. That's why I wrote on your, I believe I wrote on the strip, the one that's glitter, because I also gave you white paint. So um, if you need white paint, I gave you white paint also. I think I did. Um, this is, it looks like it's white and it, it's glue. It's actually like a glue with the glitter in the glue. So when you paint it on, the glue will dry and you'll just see the glitter, but still don't glob it on. Still pull it out nicely. Otherwise you're gonna have like too much glitter on the piece. All right, and then you let that dry. And this is a sealer too, so if you put this on the whole piece, you don't even have to seal it. And remember I said, paint the bottoms. I would always be upset if somebody had left it like that and didn't paint the bottom. So that's about it, and um, thank you. Thank you so much for picking up these kits and for doing this class and for watching my YouTube video, and to thank everyone who follows me on YouTube. I appreciate it. I hope to see you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.